Okay, so last time you made your way from the Kiev where the Frontiersmen's Guild had their hideout, got to Medford and saw it in complete ruins, iced over, smashed, buildings destroyed, people's bodies froze mid-run, mid-combat, and you saw the corpses of fellow guild members hung by the neck along the outer walls of Medford. You then find your first survivors, two guards guarding the storehouse, who seemed a bit suspicious, a bit dodgy, so uh, you killed them and they wouldn't give you any <laughs> info. <laughs> uh, they were trying to get to a... Uh, you did hear screaming coming from the Lord's Manor, but you continued trying to make your way towards uh, Nathan's house closer to the docks, and find an increased density of guard patrols. And from what you heard, it sounded as though they were searching for a specific house where they had to try and find something. A uh, house. Which yeah. is the house you're currently in, Nathan's house, which is in ruins right now. Fucking sweet. So, you went in, Killed some guys. Leroy started eating a man. And uh, the screams and started to battle alerted patrol. He came to investigate. And have now got more reinforcements as battle was breaking out even thicker. So I don't remember the order things were in, but I believe it was Barrack, Carrick, Guards. Right. And I'm pretty sure we ended on the Guards turn, because that. Dude ran up to the top of the map. Well, I so rolled you, an initiative of eight, so... Do you want to use the same initiative order, or should we spice it up and make uh, a new one? No, we'll use the same initiative order. It's the same combat, like, so... Yeah, it's don't want to lose your prime position. Yeah. So we will jump straight back into the combat with Beric that? going first. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna... Difficult hmm. choice. If these guys rush in behind me, because they're behind me, do they get a better hit or anything? Or... Only if we choose to use some optional rules. Which I don't know if we're gonna use yet or not. Okay, right, well, for now, I will just uh, put both my attacks into the shieldy boy. Make those rolls. Whoop. Damn it. Okay, so yes. take your first swing. One second. Slides off his shield, but as he's reaching up to block, you come in with the offhand. Get a good jab into his torso with a how much damage? Oh. Looks like the chain shirt catches the brunt of the force, oh. but it would hurt quite hard. Do I get an extra d6 damage? Koi is still up above you, where you were hiding. Oh yes, because he, he shot at him. With... Yes, yes. Uh, right, well that's my turn then. And now it is Karak. Sitting with this. your bow. Can I shoot this guy without shooting Jacob? Yes. Easy, right? Let's do that. Jeez, that was a shit so, roll. You would have taken a shot then, but you are trying to not shoot Beric. It's kind of hard to hit the two scuffling together without accidentally shooting him. So your shot kind of plants into the ground between them, and you get a slight glance of, oh shit, you almost shot me. But it is on to the guards. And we'll do the ones at the bottom oh, first, Mr. Polar Boy. Oh no. So, Mr. Polar Boy. Still hiding behind uh, the guy with the shield, tries to swing around with his polearm. But you see it coming, it's very broadcasted swing. You can easily take a step backwards out of the way of the strike. But the guy with the shield, he tries to 
push in the distance to get closer. You want to give it a thrust out your direction, clipping you for ooh, three damage. That's a clip. Three damage is a clip. Yes. Because you now they don't you're have high kidding. strength. You've got like 50 hit points, have you not? Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but this like nearly down to half. It's like there's three guys behind me. There How are. are you down to half? Oh god, they're always cast. Fair enough. So, you can hear the scuffling of the feet on the snow as they all try to start making their way in. You hear one barging through the door hanging on one hinge behind you that oh, comes shit. in for a charging slice with his blade as you've got your back. Mostly turn to him, but you already took your step back. Hear him coming and managed to deflect it out of the way. Grounded! Uh, the crossman who ran out screaming for help is still shouting trying to raise the alarm. Intruders! Intruders! And fires a crossbow bolt up towards uh, Carrick through some of the broken wall and windows. But where you're standing, there's like the planks that are still left. You see the crossbow bolt kind of pierce into it an inch from actually hitting you. And then one of the guys tries to run up tries to climb onto a barrel and make his way up the wall towards Carrick. Though, as you, like, hear him running up, you see him, like, climb onto this barrel and stand on it to try and raise himself up, but then he just falls see, into the barrel. I'm watching him barrel right time, climb up a barrel. Yes, yeah, so you see him you know, get onto the barrel and get up to you, but the barrel lid just gives in, and he falls into the barrel. <laughs> He's a fat fuck. Yes, you rolled a one. Thank God for the rotted wood. So we are now back to uh, Beric. This is not good. No, it is not. Um, hmm. <sighs> I'm going to use... I think it's cunning action. To do what? Disengage. I think. Ah, yes. yes. Yep. How so far do you want to go? Uh, I want to go back into this corner. Okay. And then I want to take out uh, my last remaining spark bomb. Oh. And. Throw it at these three. Okay. They need to make their seals. Oh. 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 Not good. Not good at all. And uh, let me see. I believe the spark bomb was a uh, 2d6 damage. So roll your 2d6. And that'll be the damage mm -hmm. all of them take. Because it's not... Why did it hit all of them? They all, like, the way the spark bomb, it's, uh, you roll to save. If you save, you take half. If you fail, you take it all. And they all failed. Nice. Oh. So with all the, the rubble, when you the chuck rolling. the spark bomb, it kind of hits a piece of wood, rolls a bit into, like, a little pile of wood that's mostly protecting... Uh, the guardsman, as the blast goes off, you can see they're all still hit. Whereas they didn't really expect oh, it. It's good they all failed. Roll the half damage of that would have been terrible. <laughs> and, let's see. And one of them, uh, the polearm guy, is actually stunned by the spark. Uh, he might have got something in his eyes, but you see him kind of disorientated a bit. The other two look okay. So I'll put a wee... No, I'll use this wee lightning bolt symbol that you can't really see. I will put this orange dot on him. There we go. What's happened to him then? 
He's kind of stunned. So it's harder for him to do things. And easier for you to do things against him. Okay. Okay. We have Carrick. You just saw this spark bomb go off on the grind. The guy trying to climb up. You're being shot at. What is your next move? This guy's inside, isn't he? No, he's on the outside. Trying to climb up the destroyed wall to get into you. Is your floor up? Where's this booty? Across the street. In oh, the ruins okay. of another house. You can see him, and he can see you. If you want to shoot him. I will... Oh, I hate melee combat. Uh, well, here we go. Here goes nothing. I will jump down. Okay. On um, where's my? Damn it! Why does my character sheet keep closing? Hold That's on. A good question. I don't know why that keeps doing that? Every time I like click on the map, it disappears. But no matter. That's a mess. So who are you attacking That's for? It. I'm gonna go with this one. Shield boy. Yes, in the back. Yeah, so you, you jump or down to try and stab him way. with your short sword, but you stumble a bit. But as you stumble, you get your dagger out and shank him right in the back. Roll your damage. Oh, finally. I did Damn, damage. that was a max damage on your dagger. So you feel your dagger go in a bit through the chain, and then you force it through and you feel some of the vertebrae and the spine kind of pop as you slide the dagger between them. And he just falls over kind of limp like still alive Leroy but Ionimo. essentially dead Leroy Ionimo Let's see Leroy's, Leroy's still the... feasting across the room Leroy sees Le... another ho sees Leroy another could feast, feast for about another year in that corpse he could oh the maggots would rid him up quicker make no mistake oh god okay so You've dropped the one in the middle. The guy with the pole arm is still looking quite stunned, but takes a wild swing for Carrick. And flashbang. And in his stunned state, he just kind of almost like blindly swinging your direction, just slams the pole arm into some of the scattered wooden rubble on the ground, completely missing. Okay. The guy yeah. with the shield has to make Should've his choice. Should have killed the other guy at the door and then, then his mate would have hit him. Maybe. The guy with the shield weighing up his options charges a barrack. So, getting his sword and shield ready, he goes in for a like a low sweep for your legs, but it's a move you've seen a million times before, and you easily hop the blade and completely fine. Excellent. Though, uh, the guy on the outside of the building, not realizing, oh my god. So, you hear the clatter of wood, and then outside, you get a glimpse through the door as you see the barrel slowly rolling past. Is he in the barrel? He, well, he cl tried to climb on the barrel to get some extra height to get up. Oh. The lid broke and he fell in. And then trying to get out, over? he rolled a second one and is now rolling inside the barrel, stuck down the street. <laughs> so he's, he's just bouncing down the road. The, the oh, wait, no, path. it's not that one. It's a. Uh... Okay. So, uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so nice. then, the crossman across the street, you hear his footsteps as he runs up to the bus stop door, taking a peek in, trying this to choose might, his targets. Uh, is this yeah. part of the wall not gone? It's mostly gone. Yeah. But he's trying to choose his target. And he chooses Carrick. That's good. So, with his... 
angle, like slamming up to the door to try and fire a shot in. He sees his now paralyzed dead friend on the ground, and the other one's stunned, kind of flinches a bit and shoots high, the bolt arcing off across Medford. Ooh. Though there's now his shouting, calling for reinforcements, the guy in the barrel that's rolling away <laughs> screaming, and you can hear faint raised voices at different intervals also now shouting and calling out in the, the ruins of Medford. Nice. And it's back to Beric's turn. Right, uh, well, as soon as I jump this guy's sword attack, uh, I will then try to land two blows myself. Well, the first one definitely hits. Oh, yes! Oh, damn. Okay. Row damage. Oh. Oh. How's that? So you're, what way are you hitting him? Just for flavor. Uh, well, is this it? I, I don't know. I wonder if I could just uh, decapitate him. You can try if that amount of damage would kill him. It's just, how would you be striking him? Uh, probably... Well, I jumped his sword attack, so probably up into the sh shoulder and then maybe his arm. Okay. So, you jumped his blade. With your momentum coming down again, you bring the first blade down, hacking a few inches down into his shoulder, and your second blade comes down around the elbow area, and with his like arm stretched out for the swing, your blood forces his arm down, hitting the ground, and you can hear, like, you can see his arm kind of twist, so it's not meant to twist. <laughs> and he drops the blade, and kind of drops to a knee, reaching up with his shield arm to kind of <laughs> hold his shoulder. He's looking pretty rough. Not, not doing so good. Excellent. And Karak. What is your next move? Did this guy shoot me? No. Oh, he, he tried to. He tried, he tried to. to. This guy can't attack me, can he? Well, he can oh. try, but it's hard. You can I hit him, engaging. but it's easier. Oh, oh, he's, Cause he's, he's, that. he's stunned. Okay, let's just get that out of the way then. Um, yes! Roll your damage for that hit. Yes! So, how are you striking this guy with your blade um probably just walking up he's probably like you know stunned and like uh just try to stare at him and then just slice from like his collarbone down to his stomach okay Whatever so the fuck. Just you, the chest. you catch just above where his chain shirt starts and you can see a couple of the links break as you slice down across his chest Probably breaking his collarbone in the process as he staggers back, still stunned. Go ahead, roll. Are you gonna attack him again with your dagger? Actually, re re roll your short sword because it would have been an advantage to hit since he is stunned. And you might get a critical hit, you never know. Okay. So, you still have your dagger. Do you wanna try and finish him off or do something I can't else? Still living, right? Okay, dagger. Damn it. That is not a hit. You, you get a bit overconfident and you're like, oh yeah, I got <laughs> this, I got this. You go up for like an execution. These guys. But in a moment of clarity, he like brings up the pole of his kind of like halberd pole arm and just bats you in the face of the pole, mm -hmm. knocking you back a step or two, keeping Ow. you away. Though he isn't looking so good either. <laughs> and we're back to the gods. Mr. Polearm. I'm trying to hit me. The guy with the polearm after batting you back tries to take a arcing swing your direction. But with his now broken collarbone, he flinches part way through the, th through the swing and just does not have the momentum to swing it around to hit you. Uh, Sword and Shield Boy up against Barrick. Uh, looking. Pretty rough. 
He just kind of keeps crouched low down to the ground, holding his fucked arm. And pretty much doesn't have a weapon left, just his shield. And kind of just looking in shock. Gives you a look of, please, for the love of God, don't kill me. <laughs> uh, the crosswoman, in a panic, takes another shot at Carrick. This time, he does get a hit. Damn you. So... Oh, so as you've got, like, staggered back a bit, took a step back to avoid the swing, you're, like, backed into the shot as you feel it uh, collide into the, your breast, the back part of your breast split, kind of Ow. right right on the edge, splitting the very edge open as it pierces through slightly into your skin, dealing eight damage. Guys are not messing uh, around. And Mr. Barrelman. Like third of my health. Mr. Barrelman rolls a seven. You hear uh, the splintering of wood as the barrel has now bumped up against the corner of a wall, split open, and he just kind of spills out onto the ground, moaning. Oh, uh, I'm so dizzy. Yes. I need to make some more rolls, but we're back to Barrick's turn. Uh, right, um... So this guy's kind of just crouched on the ground, is he? Yeah, he's like kind of kneeling down on one knee, holding his shoulder and arm. Okay, I'm gonna... Go to walk past him. He makes no attempt. Kind of slumps uh, more onto the ground. Gonna just uh, run over here and drive my sword through this guy's gut if I can. Make your attack with an advantage because he has still not resisted his stun. Ain't that a bitch? Like he's pretty much got flashback. I think that's a hit. That is a hit indeed. Nice. So, where are you, where are you hitting him? In the gut? Just Yeah, just stabbing him right in the gut. So you try and ram your blade up through his stomach, but the chain catches most. It breaks through a bit, but not enough to finish him off just yet. And then... With my second hit. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I shall put my second longsword across his throat and just cut his throat. Brutal. Bizarre. <laughs> oh <my. laughs> so, I think he's dead. Head deleted. So, as you ram the first bit up into his gut, the chain barely catching it, he kind of drops the pole arm and looks down. You can see a bit of blood trickling out through his mouth. As he, he just looks back up, locks eyes with you as your blade just slits his throat, the spray kind of splattering across your face and armor, and he just slumps backward. The spray just flying out from his neck. Yeah. In a little, in a little fountain. Excellent. He is dead. You could still move a bit, since you didn't move that much. Um, I think after doing that, I shall... What way is this doorway here? Like, what is the structural integrity of this? Barely being I... held on by one hinge. Kind of like, kind of flapping in the wind, kind of. I would mean, see, like, see this corner? Is this corner yeah. actually here? Barely. Maybe like a couple feet of pillar and a little bit of wall. Still okay, standing. Maybe, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go into this corner and just relax. So I can't be Sneaky. that easily shot by the crossbow one. Okay. And uh, that'll do me. And 
Tarek. Right. Why is this guy got red dot again? Because he's pretty much got one arm almost cut off. And he surrendered. Oh, so he's bleeding out. Hence the red dot. Pretty uh, much. Oh, well. Poor chum over here. I'm 23 HP. That is not good. One. Just over half. So uh, that's shooting the guy in the doorway. Oh, definitely in range. Oh, well, that's what are we doing? Is that... I can't remember if 14's enough or does that have to be 16. He is in cover behind the mostly destroyed doorway. Ah. So, you, he sees you pulling up the bow to take a shot and just ducks in a bit. Your arrow just flies straight past where his face would have been as he ducks out of the way. You can still okay. move. You don't have to stand there. Each. I'm assuming this wall is intact. Intact enough. It just right. the house doesn't look good, but most of it is still partially there. Somehow. Okay. So the I have to crossbow kinda you see him scan the room and slowly start to back up to the next house across the street. And Mr. Barrel Guy, who hasn't had a good time so far. Let's see, he's got to come. Yes. There's a couple shouts of communication from the crossman, like, "Quick, get in there! I'll watch out if they try and run." Obviously, fear in his voice, but. Determination to avenge his friends. As the guy previously in the barrel, you see him building like... He's just picked up one of the axes he was using to chop up the debris. And just charges straight through the door. Glancing to his right and tries to take a, a chunk out of Barrack. If he can. No. He cannot. Sure. Aha. So, you see, you hear him coming with his heavy footfalls, and as he swings, you just duck a little bit, and the axe slams into what's left of uh, the wall. This is not good. If people keep missing this, this the integrity is going to die. Rumble. Does the house have a health limit? Uh, that is unknown, but it doesn't look very structurally sound. So, uh,. The crossman's just kind of chilling, hanging out back there, but it is now back to Beric. So what is your next move? Strange silence. <laughs> I think a Karak should definitely, you know... My mic was muted. Oh. <laughs> oh, what, what? You've just got attacked, Jacob. What are you going to do next? Oh, was it my turn? I thought it was Karak's turn. Yes, you're, be you're before uh, him. Alright, then... With that guard missing, I... It wasn't even my fault! I knew it! <laughs> I think I'll. Oh, I rolled advantage. Apologies. Oh, I would have hit anywhere. Uh. Right. Did you open a window in here? Oh, yes. Oh, going for two swings. Oh. That's a big damage right there. <clears throat> okay, so. What way are you striking out of this per man as he comes through the door? Uh, well, probably. I've ducked. So, I'll probably maybe try to get the back of his leg or something with one cut with the sword. And then go for a second swing for the, maybe the upper part of the body. Ooh. So, with him being thrown a bit off balance, taking this big, heavy-handed swing, slamming into the wall. You easily wrap one of your blades, run behind him, and just slice like the tendons on the back of his knee. 
just completely sever them on probably his like left side. And under his own weight, he just kind of drops to that knee. And as he's dropping, you just pretty much just, you know, hold your blade out. And he slides that on a little bit, breaking through part of the chain and stabbing maybe about an inch or so into him. He's not looking so hot. His own weight dealing him the damage. He's a big man. Big hefty oh, yeah. guy. Unlucky, fatty. Though it is now Carrick. What do you want to do next? See, it is his fault this time. <laughs> God damn it, McCauley. Yeah, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, 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 whatever. Um, oh, wrong button. Is there anywhere in this wall? Like, the take... whole wall is bloody open. Alright, okay, we'll just shoot this body then. Right. Okay, shooting out of the crossbowman. Yes. That is indeed a hit. Where are you aiming? Uh, probably for his, like, ten or a mass. Okay. So as you see the crossman trying to back up and keep a watch in case you try and run, you pop up pretty much out of nowhere, loose an arrow, which you see, hit him. Hit him like a, run like the liver area, and just pierce straight through the chain mail into his torso. Definitely Ooh. knocks him back about a, a few feet. He's looking winded from the hit. Doesn't look so good either. But when he not good, yeah. gets a return fire. He does. Nice spotting your location. Uh, and crossbow goes through the wall. <laughs> headshots, guy. Fires Fine. his crossbow your direction. You do have some cover from the wall, which. Barely. Burnt like, as you're mid-ducking back down after taking the shot, you just get behind the wall and see the bolt just boom, straight, like, at your eye level, a couple inches in front of you, just punch through the wall and just get stuck there. Whew. Like, it was a good easy, shot. Easy. If the wall wasn't there, you definitely would have been hit. In the eye and then over dead. And right. then, uh... You got an axe who's dropped down to his knee. Pulls the axe out from the... the wall. And... tries to push himself up off... your blade. But it, it doesn't look like it's gonna go so well. So you need to roll a strength check. He's gonna try and grapple you to the ground. And use his weight to just fall on you. Oh dear. Oh dear, indeed. <laughs> so, you're, you're sitting there trying to like push this blade up harder, and you just kind of look up a bit, see the look of fury in his face as he just grabs you with a big meaty hand, and just slams your head into the wall beside you, which ah. frees him from the blade in his chest, but it only does... And we'll, we'll roll a d4 for, for the damage. No, a d2... Plus his strength. You take three damage from him, slamming you as hard as he can into the wall. I think I have a concussion. You might. It beat you. Okay. Do I have to... I don't have to roll a strength check to get out of that or anything. It was just him throwing my head against the wall. Yeah, at the minute. Okay, I'm good it's to, not your um, turn. My sword's still stuck in his chest. Not now. With him like slamming you, you would have like lost your leverage of jamming it up in there. He's, he's pretty okay. much freed himself, but he's still dying on a knee. I'm gonna use quite big man still. Uh, if I wanted to kick him to the ground, uh, what would I use? Would it be strength? Yes, or... it'll be strength against his strength. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Strength Cause... save. This is... Spot up! Oh, let's see how he does. So, you 
get up, back off bit, and try and kick him down. You plant your foot straight in the middle of his pecs on his chest, and you feel like a little bit of give, but then it just stops. Oh. And you just see like a big meaty hand counter that almost, what he's going to do, he's going to grab your foot as soon as it's oh. his turn. <laughs> this is going to get Thanks. interesting. Well, I just gotta pull out my dagger and try to stab him in the head. Oh! <laughs> Make a roll. Make a roll. Oh. Oh! You get him. Okay, roll your damage. So, like, you kick him, your foot just kind of stops, and his hands come around to grab your foot, getting ready to just throw you. But quickly, you just drop a sword, pull a dagger from your belt, and just plant it straight in the top of his skull. Yeah. And you just see the eyes just kind of twitch a bit. And then roll back on the head as you're just holding him up with the dagger through the brain. Whew. Tasty. That's such quick thinking for you. Okay. It is now a carrick. Oh! Right, so everybody's dead except for this man. Well, he's still living, and but God, he's going to be... Yeah. He... Is he dead? Yes. He will be dead in like two minutes. Yeah, right. it's going to take him a few minutes to die. The heart, the heart's still pumping, but he can't eat pumper. Leroy could still get experience. Leroy could still <laughs> get the XP here. Well, what do you want to do now? He's passed out of blood loss. Ach, we'll just pot shot down buddy again. Oh! Okay. Well, Where are you he... aiming this time? <laughs> Uh, down the same time, it's actually in place the last arrow went. <laughs> Wait, what? What'd you say? Just like the arrow, like a Robin Hood move, the arrow like it splinters the other arrow. Because <laughs> it's in the exact same spot. <laughs> no, I was actually thinking like for, like, it's, again, the collarbone, like, upper shoulder. This is your attack. Yeah, we'll go with that. So, shoulder? Shoulder. Oh yeah, so backed up against the wall, you see him like... I don't want him to be able to breathe. Watching, watching for you popping up again. And your arrow flies through, strikes him in the shoulder, and you see him just kind of hit against the wall a bit. Pull a bit with his shoulder. <clears throat> and your arrow is like, went through the chin mill through the kind of fleshier part of the shoulder, out the other side, oh. and pinned him through the wall. And Weird. he's not looking great. Like, oh, sick. Like, you can see him kind of limply, barely holding up the crossbow. Can he even reload anymore? Like, <laughs> oh, he, like he reloads at the end of each of his turns. So he's already loaded, ready to shoot you. Arrow coming out of the shoulder that can reload a crossbow. That's oh, not he's not going to be able to reload anymore. Okay. So with his last weak bit of energy, you see him struggling to lift up the crossbow as he fires it towards you. Please don't kill Leroy. And as you duck back down again, you see the bolt straight through the wood. Well, the metal part comes through the wood. I probably would have hit you if you hadn't ducked. <laughs> this guy's aim. He, he's on point right now. Two shots that were perfectly placed as you ducked. Just not quick enough to hit you. As he's now pinned to a wall. Just unfortunate for the integrity of that wood. Yes. Wood's holding surprisingly well. But maybe not for much longer. Okay. Now the last threat you can see is the guy who's had his arm cut up that's kind of slumped on the ground, trying to crawl away, but it's quite hard to crawl away when the ground is full of debris. What? Is this crossbow and frigged, is he? Or... Oh yeah, he's kind of just like hanging there, crossbow like uh, almost right. falling out of his hand, All like right. he's essentially well, fucked. I'm gonna pull the dagger out. Of uh, this guy's head. Let him flop to the ground. Yeah. 
and then uh, I'm just gonna like walk over to this guy, the one that I believe that was in charge. Yes. And, uh, search his inventory. Oh, you're searching him. Yeah. Roll well, investigation. Wow. So good. So as you're poking through the pockets and the pouches, trying to find something of value, you reach into one of the pockets and you feel something furry, wet, damp. And you're like, ugh, what is that? Ugh. Pull, pull the pocket up a bit more and look in, and it seems as though Leroy has vacated his corpse and had crawled into the pocket of this man. And as you went to loot him, you find Leroy nestling yeah. in the pocket. Ah, Leroy is covered in blood, and he's rid him up. He's got the axe. Leroy, he's get got, out of there. He's jumped three skill levels already. Oh, so nothing else but Leroy. You'd need to search a bit harder to try and find something else. Not everything is covered in Leroy, say, uh, kills. Uh, can blood. I lift Leroy out? <laughs> yes. Oh, well, actually, Macaulay, Macaulay, or no, Jacob, roll animal handling. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> you bitch. He's gonna give me tetanus. <laughs> uh, are you gonna get AIDS off this way here? Uh, I mean, that's not terrible. Okay, so Leroy seems a bit feisty, but he doesn't bite you. Uh, that's okay. Looks like he's full. He's, he, like, he's a little more. bony, but you can see his Hi, stomach mate. bulging, like yeah, ready Leroy to pop. Back. Oh, you're somebody. You can go back in the pocket. <laughs> you do still hear in the distance the shouts of voices. A rattling of some, like arm and weapon, like armory and weapons and stamp oh feet that I is getting slowly here. closer. Whatever you gonna do here, but you gotta be quick. Oh, God. Okay, well I'll search further now in the, in the sky now that Leroy's out of the way. Yes, you should probably just both roll investigation and see how it goes. Uh, Mother of God! You can't hire. Okay, so you're poking through his pockets and you find a. There's not really much on him. There's a couple, uh. Like, there's like one gold and five silver. But you also find a crumpled up piece of paper that is mostly stained in blood. Like fresh blood. That looks like Lovely. Leroy has been brushing against it. Is it readable? It is partially readable. The mm. only bit that you seem to be able to read uh, through the soaked blood is the bottom portion of the actual uh, letter itself. And I need to find a thing. Okay, so trying to read down through it, the top bit is just smudged in blurred ink, soaked in with the blood, but the bottom portion, as you read through, you, what you can gather is that uh, it's a letter from the Lord, titled at the bottom, and it's from Lord Emmanuel Bell. And the letter reads, Find the house of the one called Nathan. There the thing we discussed is hidden. Find it now, take whatever resources you need. I don't want those rats coming back and getting it. Mm. Bastards. And that is all you can read. Right. That's like a small like paragraph at the bottom. It's probably only about a third of the actual letter itself. Okay. Um. 
I would know this building quite well, wouldn't I? Yes. Um, right. Is where they were cutting over here how you get into the basement? It is or do pretty I close. Even know that the basement ex exists? You, you know it's there. You've both been there before. Um, could we get into it quickly? Knowing what is in the way? Um, analyzing what there is here, one of the roof beams, like the big beams that actually hold up the roof itself, has collapsed across this room, and this would have been like your storeroom, where you would have had all the sacks and the barrels, which would have been on top of the hatch, keeping it hidden. So all those barrels have been smashed, spilt all over the ground, bits of barrel everywhere. Up like the big beam it's probably like a good probably like eight inches by eight inches it's just dropped, splintered on one end across. You probably need to somehow get round it or tip it out of the way to actually get to the hatch down into the basement. Though the signs of commotion are slowly approaching. Uh, hmm. I think we should cack. Let's get out of here and get across the street into some cover. Okay. So, out the main street to where the crossbow man was? Yeah. Okay. And from there, where are you looking to go next? Into this side alley, okay. and then into this house, possibly. So, like, in this way. So into this house here. Yeah. Okay. Then sort of find some cover that we can look across the street. Roll some stealth. Ah, something I know I can do as I wrote, as I say that. Oh, nice. I'm a hiding boy. Okay. I'm, I'm, so great, but... I'm like the darkness itself. So you like start trying to blend and hide into the surroundings. As you're hiding, you look up and you see where one of the two-story windows would have been. There's a few like planks sticking out in a little corner where you could hide and the curtains are like blowing in the wind. Uh. You climb up and like nestle into the corner. The curtain's blowing around you, perfectly hidden from all angles, giving you a good view of the area. Ooh, cool. So you're both nicely hidden in the house. You can hear the faint moans of the crosswoman pinned to the wall <laughs> who's slowly uh. bleeding out. Uh, but, uh, pardon me. As you hide, you hear the commotion start getting closer and closer. How long do you want to stay and wait? Uh, until someone shows up. Okay. Two days later. So, <laughs> it doesn't... Morning has arrived. <laughs> it doesn't seem to take too long. Oh, Only oh. a couple minutes after... You got into cover. You do hear the clinking of armor and weapons get closer. And you first see a patrol from your left side. Oh, my days. And like a good jog pace. Start running down the alley. See the crossman pinned up against the wall in the torchlight and kind of form up. Shields in front, pole arms to the side, and a crossman standing in the back, kind of scanning the area between the shieldmen. See, this is a situation where I'd be like, I need more spark bombs. You do need more spark bombs. But even though these guys have stopped, you do hear the sound of more running and commotion coming from the other direction as well. Though it doesn't seem as close. 
watching this patrol mm -hmm. stop, you hear one of the polearm shout out. Declare yourself! Who here still lives? And you've got a kind of view of the crossman, but you see one of his hands just kind of raise up a little bit. You hear a whisper trying to say something and just goes limp and he hangs there on the arrow. Oh, that's good. That's good. Possibly having bled out. I was worried yeah. about him snitching. He's <laughs> going to be like, am I going to have to stab this gun through the wall? <laughs> that would have been pretty funny. I think it's another six inches to your left. Are you sure? <laughs> Go to the, the, the patrol then. The guy at the back barks an order. Slowly, foot by foot. We don't want any more ambushes along here. And they slowly keep inching forward. Trying to keep a watch on all sides. To make perception. Oh, that was good. So as they are stepping up bit by bit towards the house, they stop, and the not really sergeant, but the guy that seems to have taken control of this small detachment, just. Slams his pole arm to the ground. Spread out. Find who did this. And they start to slowly spread out one by one to try and locate you. Excellent. Divide and conquer. The one of the helmets going to be the one that was giving the orders. Okay. And this one guy is going to stay in the middle. So they all start spreading out to different areas. Slowly, methodically, checking every window, every bit of wall, behind every alley. Shouts going back and forth between them of where they are, what the area is like. These guys are determined to find you, wherever you may be. What is your oh, next man. move? Um, I say we let one come in. Surely they'll come in one by one and then just knife the cunt in the back. They're well hidden. Well, he's knife. going that way. He's yes. checking in the house. He's going to stay here. He's going to obviously go this way and he's going this way. So, I am gonna... Uh, Can I get along this top floor, Andre? No. With some acrobatics, you probably oh. could scuttle along a bit further. And then, can I jump out? If your acrobatic roll was good enough, yes. Basically, we want to jump behind this guy and assassinate him. Or okay. go for assassinate. Acrobatics and then attack. Can I can I do that? Because is this would this count as a surprise? Oh uh, they know there might be someone in the area, but they don't know they know less than the last guy's knew. Because he doesn't know if you're where he is, you could be on the other side. Well, the guys knew you were in the house and to expect something. This guy, for all he knows, you could be halfway I across the off. world. Yeah. So for this one, okay. yes. Nice. Right, well, I'll roll acrobatics first then. Indeed. Don't fuck with Trying game. to be a sneaky assassin boy. Oh, oh, yes. Very nice. So, you, like, where you are, it's kind of like. The only way to get that way is to actually go onto where the wall is and it's been destroyed and tiptoe along the actual wall, which is splintered and broken to all hell. But you gracefully pull yourself up, kind of balance on it, arms to the side, and creep your way along. 
poised to drop. Oh, nice. Well, I'm just gonna Good drop advantage. on drop on his back and just plant both swords down oh. through each side of his shoulders. Nice. Uh, hopefully, we'll kill him outright. <laughs> Uh, so, both of your attacks will have advantage. If they hit, they're critical hits. Oh! Jesus, if you don't kill him, Jacob, you're in the wrong game. Right, so... Boom. That is one uh, hit. That's a, hit. Uh, that's a double that hit. Two hits. Nice. So then... How do you... What do you just what does he roll for damage? Roll. Just roll these and uh, roll standard ones and then add the... Yeah, just, why, not just, why not just roll like 1d8s? Like 2. Is it 2 1d8s? Twice? Just roll no. 4d8 plus 12. There we go. Type that in. Or no, 4d8 plus. What's your strength? Or your dexterity? 4d8 plus 6. 6. 4d8 plus 6. That's a lot of damage. 26 damage. That's so, a lot of damage. As you get to the edge, right on the corner, and just hop off, blades out, aim down. You just slide them in silently, not even catching any chainmail, just one on each side of his neck, just straight in as you Hello. land behind him. Pull them out, and just lifeless, the body just falls onto the icy oh. snowed ground in front of you in the Blood just starts slowly pooling out. Not even nah. a noise made. I don't. I am the shadow. Yes, right. you were a shadow. And then. Well, while you did that, what was Carrick's plan? To hide and sit still or to make a move of his own? Uh. uh... I don't trust myself with acrobatics. I think you're what both equally good at it. Oh, you could just like uh, climb over okay. part of the wall and shank him in the back. Oh, fuck it. Acrobatics. Oh. Well, you won't need to do acrobatics as you're not bouncing oh, along the top of a roof. What do you, I have to roll then? Well, just yours would be more just stealth. stealth Since you're is. grind level. Oh, not great. So your stealth is against that guy in the middle. He, he sees you through the runes, moving through the house. Oh god, whoa, whoa, why is token sentence? Come on, go away. So, is this an observant boy? Okay, so, you're thinking about going for the guy, but the crossman's looking your direction, and you see him turn to start looking towards the other building. And you take your chance and sneak across the house. Yeah. So he is like, just turned to look the other way. <laughs> and it'll give you time to jump out the window to make your attack. Son of a bitch. Still, oh, well. still have your dagger. Son of a bitch. Yeah, this wouldn't work. So creeping through the house to try and go up through one of the windows to pounce on this guy as he's going by. You go to jump out the window, but as you do, the kind of like drape hey. curtain things kind of flow into the way, catch you a bit, your short sword gets kind of snagged in them. As you swing it around to try and jam it into the guy's back, your momentum is being took out by the curtains, and you slide off his chain mill. Come in for a stab with the dagger, but the guy barely whips around in time for him to dodge the dagger blade. And now we need to roll some initiative for this new combat. Just so we can do things, because that was a surprise round. So now you might be able to go first again, or you might not. Nope. Oh boy. Oh boy. We 
need. Well, uh, obviously, I'm not going. I'm, I'll be back in a second. I'm not going first, obviously. Okay. We need a bear initiative. You will still be sneaky, sneaky, hidden until someone actually spots you and says, "Oh God, you're going first. Damn! I got a. Tw <laughs> I rolled a twenty-one. Damn you! I thought my Excellent. guys would get to go first for once. So." You don't even know what Carrick has currently done. In your mind, he's wherever you it's think he well. might be. Yeah, it's going, it's going as planned. You're breaking out. Um, right, so what is the... Like, two... Like, this house and this house. Like, can I climb into these at all? Oh, yeah. You can get into the houses pretty much wherever you want. Okay, well I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into this one and uh, just in the acknowledgement that I hope that someone will come and investigate this body. So I shall sit in ambush and uh, I shall roll a stealth roll. See how sneaky you are. To see if I'm a sneaky boy. And oh. I should not have rolled advantage, but thirteen. Thirteen is not that great. Thirteen is not that great. So as you get in sneaky and hidden, getting prepared for what is to come, let the patrol patrols on around more. But with your distance comes dark. Oh, no. So, you try and look down the alleyway, but in the faint light of the torches that were kind of set around the place and the guy in the middle's holding, you can't really see where their leader dude went. Though, on the far side, across the house you were hiding in, um, damn it. I'm assuming all these guys have torches too. Yeah, like they've kind of got you know, like the shields you strap to your arm so they can hold a torch. Ah, uh, yes. The shield. Yeah. Well, the ones that have shields. The guys have pole arms would have been pole arm in one hand, torch in the other. I like the crossbow. So you just have just one hand. <laughs> yeah, like crossbow would be sound like a sling. So he can hold the torch. But if he needs to use the crossbow, he'd throw it. Well, I suppose he could, have a, he could have a lantern tied on the, the side of his belt or something as well. Yeah, right. Lantern would probably make more sense for a crossbowman. Ah, ah good timing, Macaulay. Am I dead yet? Not yet. But uh, you know, as you've tried to sneak up on this guy and stab him in the back, uh, oh. and you missed, and didn't hit him, he spun round with the pole arm and just whacked you like kinda kind of staff like just whacked you with the butt pushing you up against the house dealing Ow. you eight damage. Only two more hits and I'm dead. So he's just like clocked you across the head and just got you pushed up against the wall and shouts out I found one I've got the bastard! A fucking murderer! And he's, he's trying to keep you pinned against the wall. Strength check. No, oh, we'll do that on your turn. Let's see if you okay. break out of his uh, thing. But, eh. Uh, it is now. Barrack. Or no, Carrick. It is not Carrick. It is your turn. So. Do you want to try and break free, or do you want to attack? Carrick. Where did you go, damn it? It's alright, it's alright, it's alright. What about um, Well, do you want to try and break free of him trying to pin you to the wall? Or do you just want to go straight for an attack to him? Break free. I want to. So that would be opposing strength. You against him. Yes. Oh, you actually won. 
So he's trying to push she up against the wall. Want a strength throw? Oh no, minus one as well. So as he's trying to push up against the wall, as he goes to shite out, he kind of shifts his attention from you to look out the direction of where his fellow guards are, which lets you twist the pole arm a bit and then duck under it. So you're now free from his grapple. You could still right. use your offhand to attack with your dagger. Oh, fuck. We can Thank use the good. roll, but roll the damage for your dagger. What's that? 1d4 plus... Oh, it would be 2d4 plus 3 now. Because <laughs> you did get a critical hit. 2d4 plus 3? Oh, I need to put in the dash R. Okay. <clears throat> so as you Better. duck under the polar... You whip the dagger on and just like jam it right up into his uh, armpit where it's kind of exposed. Jam it up in there and pull away. You can still try and move, but if you do, he will get to swing at you. Fuck that. Gotta stay close. Yeah. This does not bode well. Well, no, it doesn't like, but I mean, well, it's always like that. Okay. double monitors. So, you're now back to Beric. Uh, well... Can I hear, like... Oh, yes. What's going on over here? Yeah. You would be able to hear the... The warning call. Gonna... How far can I move? 30 feet? Yep, 30. And then another 30 feet if I don't do anything? If you use your bonus action to dash, you can move another 30 and still attack. Ah, uh, okay. Hmm, interesting. Okay, saying that this fool is uh, nearly gonna die, I'm going to uh, run to here. Okay, uh, okay. run to here, jump out uh, of the building, and uh, attack this man with my long sword. Okay. Make your attack. What wizardry? <laughs> so, with the haste of. The split second you hear the shout, you make the choice to run. You jump out of your building through a broken doorway of the house in the middle, runs through the busted up rooms, jump out through the same window that Karak had previously jumped out of, and you just try and jump out mid-swing, but took a lot of effort to dodge all the debris in the heist and your swing just doesn't have the power to beat its way through the chain mail. Just slides along the edge, sending some sparks out. I like that a bitch. Indeed it is. Now it is back to the gods. And guard number leader dude starts sprinting well, Back you up. can't see that street anymore, probably. That whole street. Indeed, you would not. Hide areas. So, you can hear the shouting of the other guards. Don't let them get away! We're coming! And you see, like, looking over your shoulder, you see the crosswoman appearing like, just around the corner. For fuck's sake, Robert. Firing a bolt down your direction. Which, you glanced, you saw him, and you just kind of pull up against the wall as the bolt whizzes between all three of you down the alleyway. And the guy that's now surrounded by you both, you see him kind of getting a bit defensive and trying to keep you at bay with his weapon, taking a swing at the 
the new adversary that has jumped out of a window in an attempt to attack him. He's just kind of you know, thrusting at you, trying to keep you back, but doesn't actually connect with a solid strike. So it is now Carrick's turn. Wow. So what are you doing? I don't want to be able to shoot through two bodies, so... Short sword! So Fuck. you take a swing, slide across his chain armor. Oh, why did that? No, ignore that second one. I don't know and why I did it twice. You then take the dagger, try and go for another stab into a vulnerable spot around the arms. Pulls back just in time for it to glance off the armor. Fuck, this is useless and idle. Well, you did get a critical hit earlier, so. Did. This is, this is karma. But, uh, we're right back to Barrack. Yeah. Nice. Right, well, I think I'll go for. Just the sword, double sword attack. <laughs> So, Unleash those sword. attacks. Too long, sir. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> so, oh, as you're please die. Please. as you're getting the swords ready, swinging the first one round, and the spearman kind of backs up a little bit. The sword again, scraping off the chain. Then you bring the second sword down. He raises up his shield. And your sword just plants itself a few inches down into the wood of the shield. And as you go to tug to try and get it back out, your sword is stuck in the shield. Crap. And he's now got you locked. Sword and shield. Well, I mean, if you look at it this way, it kind of disadvantages him a wee bit as well. It does. So... Seeing your sword get trapped into a shield, he just tosses the shield off, kicks both hands around the spear, and just tries to use it like a club, and just whack you with it, two-handing that spear like like a boss. He actually got a hit. Good right, man, right. guardsman. It's gonna impale me. So. He's kind of not not using like the pokey part, like the actual spearhead. He's building it more like a staff at this point, where he's just trying to whack you with the pole. He just okay. lifts it up, brings it round, and just strikes you like on your uh, arm where you would be holding the lodged sword and the shield that he just dropped. Just whacks your arm, hurting wow. a decent bit for six solid damage. Ow! That was a hard hit through your uh, leather. Oh. You guys, he's gonna be bruised all hell. Oh yeah. It's like crappy out of every freaking time he's in a fight. So, the crossman then fires a shot down the alleyway again, but try not to hit his friend. The bullet just whizzes overhead. Woo! As he kind of gets off side here. And this other pole arm dude just barrels down at a full sprint. Just you see him winding up for a swing. But it is now Carrick's turn before he gets his head in. <sighs> what do I have to do to disengage? Do I not have like a special thing where I get an advantage to disengage? No, it's not that. I can't remember. Let me see if you have you can use your bonus action, which is your offhand attack, to disengage, and then you can still shoot if you want. All right, we'll do that then. Okay, so you're. Need to roll that, uh... No, you just go That's... your movement or however far you want to go. Why the fuck is my character? Oh, that's again. It's about the seventh time I've had to open this. Ah, uh, fine. Can't of a thing. Oh, praise Jeebus! Which one are you shooting? Who you were attacking. And which one you're shooting at? 
the shield go? Well, he doesn't have a shield anymore. Why are you shooting at him? Right for the heart. Okay. Roll your damage. Nice. So, call it. as he's there <laughs> whacking Beric over the head with his spear, Ow. <laughs> he sees you going to run, tries to go for it. Is a... that plus three as well? It's no? plus three is on the nine. So oh, it's a six okay. plus three, then plus four. So he sees you going to run, gets ready to try and run after you, but you just whip around with the bow, hey, plant one wet. straight into his heart. He takes a couple day, steps day. and then looks down at the arrow, snaps it off, and then plants into the snow. Like, you think, <laughs> this guy's coming for me. He's not going down as he breaks the arrow away. Uh, a base, and then, ugh, yeah. Drops. <laughs> you can still move a little bit if you want to move more. <laughs> run away! Run. Well, you're hardly going to run away, are you? Oh, there was, a, there was another guy in this building. We'll put him here. Where? Oh. I forgot the guy in the building full of bodies. I thought he was dead. He was I thought he was another eight. body. Hey, no, what are you talking about? Leroy, Leroy, Leroy ran him up. Just, that guy was just a wee bit corrupt. He was, you know, stealing coin purses. Yes, he was doing a bit of loading. You see a couple of coins coming. falling out of his pockets in the snow. But it is now back to Beric. Is it with the guards? Guards are after you. Oh, the guards are after me. Uh, right, well, I suppose I'll just have to fight the captain now. Ah, shit. Um, right, well, I'm just going to have to go with the long sword and the dagger now. Yep. Um, oh, and with a long sword. Ooh. So, bringing it around for a strike, he brings up the pole arm, kind of catching it and deflecting it off to the side. Um, when he's deflecting, go in oh. first. Dabby, stabby, has dabby, left dabby. himself open. You know, nice wee shank in with the dagger into the side. Nice. So now, it is the guardy boys. Oh dear. Please so, crosswind in the back, seeing a clear line towards Carrick in his anger oh. now. <laughs> shoots. But oh, I can't wait to yeah. die. As he, as he shoots, it. it flies a bit too high and hits some of the ruins of the buildings behind you. Like, these guys have ranged weapons, you know, it's not their day. Okay, I'm pretty sure you have a health potion. Uh, health, health. health potions are for pussies. The next guy... I'm gonna go out. Ah, gonna... oh, fuck! Seeing you I'm trying to it. escape as he runs round, he runs I'm round. Trying to escape. I'm just making a tactical withdrawal, you can't. So, you can try and hit him as he goes by, Dick, but he's just running by you to try and engage Karak. Oh, nice. Free attack! Uh, he's with taking... the longsword or with the dagger? Whichever Take one you want. Or... Could Barak do me a favor and cut the leg Make that swing. Damn it! He was... you're, you're too distracted with uh, the, the guy in front kill. of you. But this swordsman charges towards Karak, raising his shield up, and he's not stopping. He's coming in to try and shove you down off the shield. Make oh, a strength saving throw, Mikai. Oh! oh. Get the fuck off me! So, well, he comes in for, in a row. for a shield bash to knock you to the ground. How are you, I how are you gonna... Batch him. You're gonna I what? Shield off him. I'm gonna take a shield off him. I roll a crit, I can do that. It's my shield <laughs> Oh, you can try. You'll need to roll another strength roll to take the shield, because he didn't roll bad enough to completely lose his shield. Oh, sure. Oh! Okay, so as he runs in for the shove, you just kind of step to the side 
And as he runs by, you just grab the edge of the shield, and he just tries to stop, slides in the snow, and the shield just slips off his arm. All right, as, so as he win. stops that's on the other win. side. That's a win. I wanted that shield, but that's a win. Okay. So, it is now a uh, pole army boy. So pole army boy keeps pressing the attack, trying to take swings and swipes at Beric, inching forward, but keeps just falling short. So you sidestep out of the way of each strike. And it is now back to Beric. So what is your next move now that Polearm Boy is coming for you? Oh, does he have to like spend a turn preparing for an attack? No, he he missed. Or, oh, oh, he missed. Like he was he was you know trying to swipe at you, but just swiping short. Right, uh, missing the guy that ran past me, I will then. Uh, Divert the longsword towards missing and yep, just sliding off the chain mill again. The same tactic. Crap! He was Use more it. prepared for you this time. Closing off his more vulnerable spots in the armor, deflecting off the strike from the dagger. Um... Alright, well that's all I can do. Okay. Um... I think I missed Macaulay's turn. So Macaulay, what are you doing? Oh, well, I suppose we're in fucking combat now, so we'll just whip out the short sword. That's a hit, but that is... sweet! What are you, what are you going for? Or are you stabby uh... stabbing? Did that guy not slip on the ground? Let's go for his attack he and sword. He skid past, but not onto his ass. Oh, he skid. Oh, okay. Let's go for his attack and sword arm. Okay. So you get a, you get a good strike past his guard onto his arm. You see a couple links of the chain around his arms breaking. But you haven't, like, cut in. You've definitely bruised. Possibly give him, you know, an almost fracture, but... Medieval bludgeoning damage. Yes, he's still holding on. <laughs> Alright, follow yeah, up with... Dagger. dagger. Oh, lovely. It's another dagger. hit. No, he's four. It's a shit roll, but we'll take it. Where, no, are, you see, that's max. where are you stabbing? Uh, that one is going to go right to the stomach. Oh. So as you bat him on the arm and his guard's dying, you ram the dagger in, getting it in as deep as you can. Feel it pierce the flesh on the other side give of the armor wee, itself. Give him a wee wink so it's personal. Oh. Yeah, just... oh. He spits at you. <laughs> Bastard. Spits at you with a snarl. So, it would have been... Uh, so now it's the guards. Because I did the guards and then I skipped McCoy. And I did Jacob. Then I did McCoy because I forgot him. It's never back. It's, it's been fixed. So, Mr. Crossbowman, it's gonna try again. Shoot! Gonna shoot you in the back. Carrick in the back. Fuck you! He whiffs. Again. Yes, again. This guy's shit. Oh, that's poor man. We'll do. He didn't have pull our man. Oh crap! Pull our man. Whiffs again. Yes. Sword bow. Oh. This is not, not going to be good. How much health do you have left, Scarf? Fifteen. Two hits and I'm good. Okay, so oh, as you stab this guy in the gut, and give him a wee wink, he spits at you, and then just brings one of his feet up, kicks you in the balls. Oh! And as you're like, Getting kicked it actually rule a constitution to see if I'm gonna kick Jesus, it. See balls. if I can still have kids at this point. See how <laughs> see about it. Yes! Okay, so it hurts. 
know, kind of a, oh, that hurt. But it's not going to drop you to the ground. But as you're distracted, being kicked in the balls, that's when his sword comes down. Going for around, like, the sides of your breastplate, where it's buckled together. Going for there, he jams it in underneath your arm. Going for a, the hole where the plate armhole is. Jams it in, and you feel it pierce deep into your side, like under your arm. Hitting mostly wow. flesh, maybe scraping off a couple bones. But dealing nine damage, because he scored a critical oh, hit. Fuck. One more Got hit, hit by a crit. Hit. So, like, this is the kind of hit you feel your vision blur, kind of see the stars, your vision blurring in and out. This was a serious stab into your side as he twists the blade before pulling oh. it out again. So then it would be Carrick, and then back to the start at Barrick. So what are you doing, Mikai? You've just been stabbed. You're not looking so hot. Uh. Did you take the damage off yourself, or will I take the damage off yourself? I never take the damage off okay. myself. Never. So you're badly hurt. You're not doing so good. <laughs> Fucking send it, bro. Let's do that. No. Okay, so one. after getting kicked in the balls and then stabbed severely underneath the arm, you weakly come up with a strike with I mean, your short sword. The the night. But he just pars it, pushes it to the side, and just grabs the, uh, the cross guard. And yanks your short sword out of your hands. You can still strike with your dagger or use your cutting action to run away. I thought I could only use my cutting action once. You can use the cutting action as many times as you want, as long as you still have a bonus action. What? It's a thing you constantly get. Ah, oh, damn it! It's like a once every turn kind of deal. Oh, well, I remember that. <laughs> yes, you, you'll definitely remember that, I. So what's your choice, Mackay? Death either way, I think, to be honest. Mr. Crossbow could, Man here, could, Mr. Crossbow Man here cannot miss this next one. I you mean, could literally just whip three times in a row. And leg it through the house. You could. What, and just dive bomb in there? Yeah, like, literally, like you can run, like, you can literally run, like, 30 feet. And then another th you can get to the far side of that house. Well, this turn he can only go 30 because he attacked. Oh, yeah. So he can only dash 30. Still. Actually, you could dash then use your movement. So yeah, you could go 60 feet. Oh, I've just realized I can whip out the whip in the main hand for the first time ever. Like... You could. Yes. <laughs> I don't have a could. weapon anymore. Or you could live. Like, you're bleeding out at this point. Without medical treatment, you would eventually bleed or, out and die. I'm not, not medicating here. You could totally, you know, disengage that guy. And then charge this guy that I'm fighting. So we'll get the bonus for fighting the same guy in melee. Or, or drink one of those two healing potions you have. Yes, I would. That would definitely be advisable as well. Wait, what? Sorry, no, you uh, McCaw came in there talking to him. What do you want? What, say that again. Missed all that. No, no, no. Nothing, nothing. Well, you should have been listening. No, I can't yeah, make your move. People are talking to me. I live in a house of six. This shit happens. Make, make your, move. your move. Only you Run can away! decide your fate. So you're disengaging, running your full move of 60. Yeah. So no, 30 to there. 30, you told me that. Yeah, you yes, but then that's your dash. Now you can do another 30 for your normal movement. Well, I can't see, so I don't know where I'm running to. <laughs> well, you know so this is the building is. right here, so... Which way do you want to go another 30 I'm feet? We'll do a hardcore flank. We'll go to the end of the building. I can't see where my... Well, are you going to go no. up, further to the right, or down? Down, bottom right. 
you're going down in that corner. Yes. We'll just say we make it to the edge of the corner, lethal. Am I, as long as I'm in cover, lethal. Okay. So you feel the sting <laughs> and the warm blood dripping down the inside of your your plate. And, and Beric, you just hear the footsteps and then the crashing of some wood from behind you. That son of a bitch. That is not your turn. Okay, I'm going to... This is a, this is a, this is a time for James Blunt music, I think. So the end, right, the end is near. Uh, I'm going to use. Uh, sack of wind takes up my. Does it take up something? Doesn't it? I think it's your bonus action. Yes. Oh yeah, that's the mood right there. Yeah, you can use your bonus action to second it. Okay, right. Well, I'll hit this guy with my sword first. Okay. Give it, give it a bit of an attempt anyway. So, boom. Oh, that actually... That is a hit. Yes! Sucker! Oh, oh that's actually really good damage too. Why are you swinging at this damage. guy? Um, probably just some links of the of the armor. Okay. But so maybe maybe his arm or something. So you feel swinging for one of his arms. You see a couple of little rings and links go flying out as you strike in as hard as you can. Definitely gonna leave a bruise. Might even have. Left a fracture underneath the surface. Nice. As you strike them as hard as you could, you even see him kind of recoiling from the hit. But he's getting ready to deal some damage next time. Oh no. You still have your bonus in your movement. Okay, I'm going to. Use my bonus action to use second wind. Okay. So that's D10 plus my fighter level, which is three. Three. So this is D10, eight, so mm -hmm. 11 health. Okay. That brings me up to 35. Indeed it does. And you still have your movement if you want to try and run. Mm, but he'll get a free hit on me, wouldn't he? He will. Nah. You gonna stay there? Yeah, I'm gonna stay here. Okay. It is now their turn. This is for the guards. We're gonna get every single one of them will hit. A freaking massacre, man. Yeah. So, the one behind you comes rushing up to help, shouting out, He's running through the house! Quick! Get him! So, Mr. Crossbowman here is gonna do a wee runny run. And can you reveal just like, just a wee bit here, please? Just, just, just a teeny bit more. Surely I can see into the street. Yes! Well, I'll give you I'll give yeah, you this wee corner here problem. as well. I'm getting wild paranoid. <laughs> Good. That's why it's dark. The yeah. darkness shall take you. Take care, we don't. Because I'll never so, be the with crossbowman you. Trying to take a shot through the building as you're running through the room. All it takes is one shot. <laughs> Okay, so running through the route, you do have the, the cover of, of the walls and the pillars and the stuff, which gives you quite a big bonus. 
I need to check how much of a bonus it actually gives you because this could mean hitting or not. <laughs> oh, my. All it takes is one. Let's see. So you get a You'll plus get five a from three quarters <laughs> cover since running through, there's a lot of stuff in the way. Which puts your armor Ugh. at 22. Because for some reason you're meant to be 17, but your character thing is on 16. 14. So you would be on 22 with your cover. He rolled. He rolled 23. He did roll a 23. 19 plus Fucking 4. Fucking sweet boys. <laughs> Oh, so I needed to check how much it gave you. Unlucky. And... Oh, okay, so as you're oh, running through, six. trying to get away, you just hear that shout of to get you as you're running through the building. You look out and you just see, like, looking through one of the windows as you're sprinting, the crossman just pull up, tracking you, and in slow motion the bolt just flies your direction going through the window, spiraling towards you, and just getting you right below the collarbones, and like the, pretty, uh, much, yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much yeah. center mass. Let's let's skip down to brass tacks, how much we're talking here, like I did You took tax. the max he could do with his crossbow, 12 damage. Right. You get thumped Excellent. in the center mass in the chest, Enjoy which the force, the force throws you up against one of the walls as you then crumple to the ground your vision just slowly blurring out as you lie there hearing the clash of battle as Beric is flanked from two sides do you know, do you know how I'm going to celebrate this? I'm going to listen to some Christmas music Christmas oh, yeah. music <laughs> I can remember, you stupid cunt Lad, okay. all that, so, so I've got okay. forward to get your point. back get your back, you're already at point <laughs> for me Oh god. It's the fifth team. Yeah, so, I'm going home in the second. The guy with the pole arm takes a strike for Beric. Please, he please. does side. get a hit with a 16 plus 4. His damage, though, he rolls 7. So he kind of lowers on his pole arm, thrusts it at, thrusts it at you, kind of jabbing you in the leg. Forcing you backwards, pushing you back towards the swordsman. And Char, is that a swordsman or a spearman? I can't even tell. Their weapons are Maybe stuck on top sword. of each other. He is a sword. a sword. So, he actually took uh, Tarek's sword as well. So he has two, but he's not very. He's not good at it. He can only. He can barely hit with one of them. <laughs> so he comes in with the two swords, swinging with his good arm as you're pushed towards him. You feel it strike across the back of your leather, but not break through. And his Can offhand that Christmas light. does not hit either. You feel it also strike across the other way, kind of crisscross, whack you across the back, but they don't hurt enough to do anything. Okay. My and turn, then. It would be Carrick's death saving throw. Nice. He's bleeding uh, out on the ground. Roll a dice. Well, he's listening to Christmas music. D20, right. 10 or better. <sighs> oh, yes! Yeah, You're so fucking it's... useless. <laughs> One for bleeding out. You don't have long left die. before I'm you do die. Bad. Now it is back to Beric. Well, if I die, now hold on, if I fail three times, death is death. You can't go around that. There are ways to bypass death. How is there ways to bypass death? But in your current situation, I don't think either of you no. have the capability no. of bypassing death. Useless fuck. No, you never know. How much HP are you on, Jacob? Enough. Enough to win. <laughs> Hopefully. I don't, oh. I, look, I have 37 HP tops. If I take, like, four good hits, that's me cat black. Right, I'm gonna... Which is what uh, happened. Gonna have to make some brink. 
Need some big brand players here. Big brand players right now. Uh... Oh, oh we're gonna have, we're gonna have a single speed. Three. Right. We're gonna. This guy's pretty lit, isn't he? He's pretty frigged. Uh, he has he has well he has taken damage, hasn't he? Yeah, you would take a, uh, taking a rough guess. The guy you have been engaged with is looking oh, worse boy. off than the guy behind you. Oh, this guy's worse off. Not by much, but he's worse oh, off. Okay. One uh, good solid hit could take him down. One really good hit could take the other guy down. Oh, meet your mic. <laughs> Alright, fine. Useless. Your life you is to do, uh, your life is flashing before be your eyes. Range. Uh right, I'm going to Yeah, fuck up. Right. Going to just swing both attacks into that guy in front of me. Do them one at a time, just in case you kill him. So, longsword. That is a hit. Where are you hitting him? Just probably in the, trying to go for the same spot in the arm that I hit okay. the chain links off. So, as he's trying to force you back, you get a swing up for his arm, hitting the same spot where you hit before, and this time you feel your blade dig in deeper and you feel it cutting through the flesh and then hit something hard and it just snap in the force and you just see his arm kind of band in the middle like of the like where the bicep is the upper arm just kind of band at an angle in, in the middle it's not meant to do and he drops the pole arm reaching up to his arm screaming as you see some of the bones have like stuck out he stumbles back a bit, falls against the building, and you see him just pass out from the pain. Nice. And as I do that, I'm going to rotate with my knife. And crouching and trying to nick the back of the guy's leg. Ooh. Do it. Oh! I'm too good. Do that damage. Nice. Okay. So you perfectly, like, after hitting the first guy, you duck down, strike in. You feel your dagger just rip across his legs where they're not that protected. And you see the blood start to stream down his leg. In a matter of minutes, he is going to be dead. But it currently... He still has the constitution left to keep standing. The fuck? Oh, I respect that. Why? Why? So, you see him, like, drop on a Macaulay's short sword and kind of grip down at his leg, trying to hold the wound as he's got the other one brandished your direction. You see the hesitation in, the, in his eyes as he makes the decision between trying to save himself or trying to avenge his fallen comrades. And the revenge for his fallen comrades breaks through and he takes this moment to try and strike out at you with his with his own short sword, still trying whiff, to clutch onto whiff, his leg. Whiff, whiff. And he Gets you just barely. Oh, as it? as you're trying to pull away, the blade strikes like up at your collarbone, slides down under, cutting just under the armor, like underneath your arm, slicing you a bit, but doing five more points of damage in the strike. Wow. I mean, respect, but damn. You can um... see him. He's pale. Like, this guy doesn't I, have long. 
Another death saving throw. Oh no, wait, crossbowman still has to go. The crossbowman does still have to go. And from behind you, you hear the shite. I think I got him! And he and I. Lol. Starts <laughs> running over here. Oh, oh, finish the job, please. Just put one right in my skull. Do it. Go. Just fucking burn it. What, what he's doing now, I will have to wait. Make your death saving throw, Lakai. He's pickpocketing all my loot. Bastard. Because you can't see what's happening. Cause so oh, it's... what is 10? Yes! 10 is good. <clears throat> You're now one for one. Okay, back to Beric. Okay, I'm going to uh, use... Uh... What is... Does dash or disengage, like... Is there a difference? Disengage is just disengage is moving your combat. movement speed out of the combat, dashes, you get to sprint, and then you get to move your movement. But, will he get a free... If you dash, yes. Da, 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 da. You okay. can get further, but he gets to attack. Okay, right. Well, I'm gonna disengage, and move... What is it, my 30 feet? Yep. Uh, so, to about here... And as I charge forward, I'm going to throw my as you're, throwing... As you're charging forward, you turn to run that way, and you get a glimpse of the crossman who's standing, bolt-loaded, cr like foot on Carrick's chest. Finish crossbow me. just aimed at his head, like you know, execution style, just looking at you as you Dude, turn you to come it. run towards him. One step further. And this fucker gets one through the skull. Do it. Do it, no ball. Drop your weapons. Do it, no balls, lad. I don't care. <laughs> I'll drop them. Fuck, pussy. He then... I would have taken that boat like a champ. He's keeping the Fuck crossbow... Oh, <laughs> He's keeping the crossbow trained on Karak's head. <clears throat> like <clears throat> then, shit, so kick them to the side and get on your knees and put your hands behind your head, and I'll let this one live. Uh, as I get down on my knees, uh, I put my hands behind my head. He's gonna need a potion, or he's not gonna make it. Shut your gub! You hear him walking up behind you. He doesn't care. Bastard. No. Wait, is he walking towards me now? He's walking up towards you. Oh fuck, I'll take him now then. Without weapons. Okay, so... We'll do... A, we'll do a, an initiative between you and him. Can you act before he... Pulls the trigger? <laughs> like, either pulls the trigger on him or pulls the trigger on you. Okay. I mean, okay. not him, on me! On one of you. You don't know where he's aiming the crossbow. You can't see him, right? He's made a pretty You're unconscious! Oh, yeah. Make your initiative roll. You're aiming at one of us or the other. Uh, right. Please, God. Please. Oh, okay. Oh. I'll take it. Do you want a screenshot of what he rolled? No, I don't. Probably a full okay. Okay. So, <laughs> what, what would you be trying to do on your initiative? Basically, just charge him. So you would be trying to get up, turn right, and charge him? Yeah, and just get him to the ground. Okay, so as you go to push up, you feel the piercing of a bolt going into your back. As oh, he... was he behind me already? Oh, you were going to get... He wanted you to turn right and get on your so did you turn oh, around or just right, get right, on your knees right, and yeah, face yeah. him? So I'm, so I'm facing like... Well, do you want to face him or face away? How far would you comply? Well, I was just going to like get on my knees. Keep looking at him? On my back and keep looking at yeah, him. That's good. Enough. So, so he shoots you in the chest. Like, as, you go, <laughs> as, as you go to get up, he just pulls the crossbow from Kakadus and goes... Thunk! 
like straight center mass. I don't give a shit. I'll take that in, damage into your gut, uh, giving you nine points of damage. But I don't even care. It's like fourteen health. Bullshit. It's not your turn, so Bullshit. you can now charge him. You see the look of uh, shock in his eyes as you take the bolt and keep going. Right, I'm gonna just... What does he have on his person? He has the crossbow and it looks like he's got a little mace on his belt. Okay, I'm gonna just charge right at him and try to pin him to the ground. Okay, that'll be a grapple. Yeah. So strength on strength. I don't know. I mean, the way I want to work it is like get him on the ground and get his mace off him. So is that essentially what I need to do? Yeah. Yeah, grapple him. If you win the grapple, you can pin him and take his mace. Nice. It all relies on strength if we survive. This is probably the most even roll off you could do as well. His strength <laughs> is non modified, it's just a straight D20. Our strength is minus one. Yep, so it's oh, pretty close. Yeah. Oh, so oh, as as you take the bolt to the chest and he just looks shocked, he fumbles to try and get another bolt. But you've already closed the distance. And you just pounce on him, knocking him to the ground. You're on top of him and you can pull out his mace. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Is Leroy what? still in my is, is, is Leroy still in my he's pocket? Leroy's is... across the... Yeah he is, he's still in the pocket, yeah. Is he is, has he got a blood rage? Can we... Can... No, he's sure probably he's sleeping after all that eating. He is fat and plump right now. He could not eat. Leroy needs XP. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh so you've I've you've knocked him to the ground like... and you've got his mace. So, can I just bludgeon him across the head with his mace? Well, your turn would be the grapple. Sorry, he would have to either attack or break the grapple, and then you can wow, bludgeon okay. him. So, we're going to go for break the grapple. So, strength check again to keep him grappled to have the I ground. Have I got his mace at this point? You have his mace, wins. yeah. So, okay. even if he wins, like you'll still have the mace, but he'll be back on his feet. Oh, fuck. <laughs> this is either like he stood really well or really badly. Make your roll. Strength. What? Oh. <laughs> okay, so. How, what way are you pinning him down? Now that you've got him on the ground? Mm, probably. I'm probably just like on the top of his chest, I would imagine, because I've probably had to just, like, ropey tackle him. And okay. I've just... So, as you've, like, just pulled the mace out, he tries to grab the mace, to pull it back, and push you off. I kind of grab you by the hands, twist, and throw you off. But he just can't get a good grip from all, like, the slippery blood from your hands on the mace. <laughs> and he just, his hands slip, th slip free, and he's left completely open. Roll of what? <laughs> yeah. So he just kind of like breaks his guard to try and get the mace, feels miserably, and is just left looking at you as you're holding this mace. What is your next move? Um... Uh... Crush his fucking head. First attack. Um, what will I roll? Uh, just roll the same as the longsword. Nice. Damn it! <laughs> For me, there was no dice roll. Even... Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that was delayed a bit, so I didn't know what happened. Okay. <laughs> Are, are you going to say it? He's like inspiring as you try and crush his head in. I don't know. I... <laughs> well, like, I'm going to say this like hits into the wood or something, does it? Tell me what it does first. Well, and then are I you going to say anything before you try and execute him? 
Uh, I was gonna go for like. Don't know. See if if the mace missed, I went into the wood. I would quick think and then just tell him to like. Uh, basically comply. Because I kind of want to take this guy hostage as well. <laughs> um, I know. Well, as you're... Like real intimidation. As you're uh, going to slam the mace down into his head, with your blood-stained hands and an unfamiliar weapon, your grip kind of slips a bit. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> and you bash it into the ground, past his head, completely missing. And kind of sprains your wrist a bit. Does not feel good. Ow. As you slam it into the ground. If you want to see how intimidating it is, you can roll intimidation against him. Yes, I will roll intimidation. That's my to see if he was intimidated. So what are you, what are you saying? Uh, I don't even know. Okay, Macaulay, do another depth saving throw. It's probably been long enough now. Damn. Oh. Uh, oh, dang. That's, that's two in the green. Two in the green. Uh, basically, just tell him to yield. Sort of shouting at him to yield. Yeah. And as, as Mia slams into the ground beside him, he just tries to spit up at you. And then tries to throw you off again with a punch to the face. He's trying to That's just another strike throw. Yes. He's trying to just kind of get you by the oh. face and toss you off. Oh. Thank you, strength rolls. Thank you. Your strength roll was good. But but no, good. Not good. <laughs> oh, no. 19 that time. No oh, more ones for the guard. So, with the missed strike of the mace, he just kind of tries to wrap one of his arms up around your face, kind of grab you by the side of the head and push you off, and get himself free, where he can now stand back up. And it is now yeah. your turn. He is back on his feet. To drink a health potion. What does that use? Normally, it's a full action to drink one. Because you have to okay. poke into your bag, grab it, pop the cork, yeah. then drink it. Takes quite a while. Okay, well, we're just gonna have to send it then. Um. Here's a question, Andre Wright. Yes. You know the way I have, like, you know, the long sword and then a secondary action, right? Yeah. Can my secondary action just be punching him in the face? Why not? I'll, I'll say it can, because why not? It's only one damage. Well, yeah. One damage plus your strength, which would be zero. <laughs> 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 but we'll say it's just one. Or, because... or actually, wait a minute. Can I lift a brick up and throw a brick at him? Yeah. You can use a brick if you want. There's plenty of bricks in my Or just place. grab a piece of the wood and just beat him with the wood. <laughs> with a wood? Piece of wood, a plank of wood with a nail on the end of it. It'd be improvised weapons. Right, I'll, uh, I'll hit him with a mace anyway. Make your swing. Ooh. Oh, he still has his uh, standard armor on. As you swing the mace, you feel the padding under the chain where you strike him and catch the blow and soften the impact. From dealing any significant damage. Right. I uh, shall then. Can I. Can I grapple after that? You would either have to that attack main, or is grapple. Is that a main one? Okay. You have yeah. to pick. Um, then I'll just go for. A punch or something then. Make that uh, swing. What, what would I work? Will I just use the dagger to see if it hits? Uh, yeah. Or it doesn't matter which one I use, really. No, not really. Yeah. Okay, so you I take a swing a... form of your fist. One get, a, get a good solid smack on him. <laughs> this could just be a punch in my name. <laughs> it might be. So as, as you punch him in the face, he kind of staggers to the side a bit, reaches down, and does grab 
a bit of rubble from the ground. What and then, it's like he grabs like what looks like it might be some sort of chair, stool, or table leg, and comes at you a laugh, trying to <laughs> take a swing at you. <laughs> Fight with a fur. So, as he goes to, like, hit you with it, it must have been, like, very weak and wrong, because he just bats you with it as hard as he can, just breaks, but doesn't really hurt that much. Nice. So, it wasn't very good rubble. Alright, another death saving throw from Carly. Yes. Will he bleed out on the ground? Golly. Yes. Death saving throw. We're seeing if you bleed oh, out yet. Or stabilized. Oh, oh, he is stabilized. Nice. On one health. He just has 320 tonight, like, but I couldn't use them. Oh, more. Macaulay. Pack and rolls, but that'll do. You are now on the edge of consciousness. You're beginning to see what's happening again as your eyes start to. Barely. Right, okay, one HP, and then what uh, am I saying? What am right. I saying? Well, currently, right now, you're you. slumped against the ground with a crossbow bolt in your chest. Lovely. And as your vision's like kind of fading back in, you see uh, Beric with a mace trying to beat this guy down who is holding what looks like a broken chair leg that's trying to beat him down in front of you in a pool oh, of your own blood. They're 1v1, and right now. They are. Yes! So you take out the mace, how much all you smack him, and you go in for a punch. So you like, get him in the chest of the mace, knock him back, and punch him in the face. Hitting this guy as hard as you can. But uh, after getting his previous weapon broken, and getting knocked over, and he grabs something else from the ground, this looks like it's an actual brick from the fireplace that's somehow got to this part of the room. And he just tries to smash you across the face with this brick. As hard as he can. And he hits you. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, God. And he does one damage. Kill you. <laughs> oh, shit. So he just smacks you across the face with a brick. Probably going to leave some swelling, but it doesn't hurt that bad. Sweet. And... Well, well now that Karak's conscious again, what are you going to do? Hmm. Okay. Now you're actually seeing what's happening. Um, do I really have the strength to wield the dagger? You can certainly try. Oh, fuck it. We'll just send her on by. So you're reaching up to try and slash him mid combat. Yep. Though you're weak, you can't get that good of a swing, and it just slides across the fabric of his clothes. Take that a bitch. And now we're back to Beric. You see Karak now taking a limp swing towards the guy. Clearly now conscious again. Oh, you swing with the mace, but he ducks out of the way. And you throw a punch, and you barely catch him with the punch. Damn it. So, he's still there with his, real brawl here. with his brick. Starts... You know, starts circling and comes in for another swing of the brick trying to knock you out if he can oh but as he, as he comes in with a swing of the brick his grip kind of loosens on it and he ends up chucking the brick past you mid swing and ends up just like slapping you with his hand it stings a little but, 0.5 damage. But doesn't doesn't have any major impact. You kind of see the hope in his eyes drain a little bit as the brick is flying across the house. He's like, "Oh shit, this ain't good." It's back to character lying on the ground, severely injured. Stab in the foot. Go for a foot stab. I believe in you. Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah. Roll some damage. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, what are you doing? Just get it going for the foot? Full bore break is not a turtle. I don't know what that is. It's a bone in your foot. Well, I see he's like kind of circling around, trying to avoid Beric. You see your chance, you just reach out, and you just jab the dagger into the foot, and you pin it straight through his foot, through the shoe, into the floorboards of the house, and you just jam it there, and let go, pinning his foot to the ground. Nice. And in that moment, I take my chance. Oh my god. Fuck him up! So, he shouts out with pain, the dagger going through his foot, and how are you smashing his face in with the mace? Uh, just uppercutting him with the with the mace, basically, as he screams and just yeah, and I'm flying back. Okay, so you like smack his lower jaw. So oh wow, yes, I technically get more damage because me and McCauley are fighting the same target. Yes. So like McCauley had already killed him. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but you're just like, like, when you whack him in the lower jaw, you see, actually, how much damage would there be? So that's an extra six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so when you whack him with the mace, you hit him with such ferocity and force that you see his lower jaw just get torn off from the impact, just shattered and ripped off of his face. Oh my. As he falls back, just teeth scattering really? everywhere, blood spurting out, he falls down, choking on his own blood from his jaw getting ripped off, before passing out and quickly dying. The jaw just kind of landing on the ground next to Carrick. Blood everywhere. His foot still pinned into the ground with the deck. Dead. Business. Woo! Hard to whack. Woo! Oh god. Right. Uh, I lift my sword and dagger. Uh. Yep. Uh, Karak. Karak! Yes. Get your head out of your ass. Get a health potion into you. We need to move. Uh, I run over to here on. I want my sword back. Yeah, okay, well, so come and get it. Uh, okay. I jump right here. This guy's dead, is he? Has he bled out yet? He's like on the edge of having bled out. Like he's barely conscious. Doesn't know what's going on around him. Just about to bleed out and die. Okay, we'll just uh, we'll stick the knife into his throat and just finish him off. I'm not having him. Uh, become a brave man and give me one last hit or something. So you finish uh, him. Yeah. Good. I'm gonna pull my sword give out of this. Give me my sword back. You uh, can get it when you go out the window. Okay. I'll uh, pull my sword out of the shield. Yep, collecting uh, all your things. I think that's basically everything. And then I'll lift a uh, Karak sword and throw it back down too. Are you going to take a health potion, McCoy? Take the fucking health potion. Okay. I am also actually gonna take a health potion. Which as well. health potion do you I want to take? I'm going to use my, just the health potion one, not the potion of I don't even know healing. what I don't even know what health potions I have. I think you've got a normal one and then one of normal healing. Okay, I need to double check. Two D four plus two. Three, four, five. I'll take. Nah. Mm, nice. Oh, seven. Nice. Your, you feel like when you drink that in a health potion, you feel a couple of your bruises become not as sore. A couple of your cuts start to get a little bit itchy as they knit together. The effect is significantly more pronounced on Carrick, who. Like, you still have the shaft of the crossbow bolt stuck in your chest, unless you want to pull that out and try not the potion heal it up. 
It's up to you. Uh, what? In my chest? Of a Karak. Well, actually, what you both have a crossbow bolt yeah. stuck in your chest. I was gonna say, like, the, both of us are... So do you just want to uh, hold those out? Uh, let's, let's just rip them out. You know, you, I'll no, rip yours out, no, you rip mine out at the same time. Touch my crossbow bolt. Don't fucking touch it. No, definitely not out here. We need to get inside somewhere. Fucking where we can rest in case we'll fucking pass out or something. Right, quick, across the street, back into this fucking house again. Ah, oh, come on! Oh, fuck. Well, I'm not moving my body anymore. I'm just dragging you along. Okay. So you're back guard, into guard, Nathan's house. Guard the door while I get the shit out of the way. In the distance, you can still hear that, like, the racket of, like, troops on the way. Oh, it, it, it's not as distant as it was before. It's definitely a lot closer. Kark, keep yes. an eye on the street. Uh, but I don't wanna. <sighs> me, me go crossbow bolt and chest. Right, how long does it... Can I assume that the, it would take to make me clear this rubble to get into here? Just or... make a strength check. See how long it takes. Why do you do this to me? Okay. Minus one. <laughs> So as you're trying to move that like big beam out of the way that's it like, collapsed over and you're pushing it out of the way, it seems where that beam had collapsed, it was holding up part of the still holding up part of the wall it was resting against in the corner. And it collapses down around you. And uh, dealing four points of damage as the rubble yeah. collapses on top of you and makes the job of clearing it away that slight bit more difficult. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm still gonna try to do it. Nope, you can keep trying. It would be easier if two people did it. Mark, get over here. I bit the explodes. <laughs> what have you done? You fucking read hard. Hey, Fawn, quick, help me move this crap quickly. What am I moving? Oh. Well, you moved it now. You don't so need me to roll. Neither the, oh, you would have got an advantage from him helping you, but you don't need it. Unless you want to get two twenties. No, oh, no, I will not. Roll. There's no, there's no, but, uh, there's no need. <laughs> but, uh, now that that rubble's collapsed out of the way, it seems as though, like, it falling down has actually made it a little bit easier. Because this big beam you had in the way is now gone. So it's a lot easier to start scraping and pushing it out of the way. And you then see the hatch for into the basement part of Nathan's house. Okay. Um. Uh, right. Bring it to a new map. In we go. Just imagine, like, uh, the Mario going through the tunnel noise <laughs> as you drop down into, into the pipe. Yes, <laughs> through the pipe. As you come out, <laughs> like, down maybe a good 10 feet, down a, a little ladder into the basement where you've been before, where there's uh, a couple beds lined across the, the wall. The hatch, shouldn't we? Yeah, you would close the hatch. Well, there's some, like, barrels and crates stored in the corner, beds along the wall, and a little table set up for people to eat at when they're hiding out inside the house. Mm, so nothing else? Nothing that really stands out. Mm. You'll have to search right. for what they were trying to find here. Uh, right, Kark. Let's look around. Something's got to be here. It's like all these, most of these walls, as you look at them, they're like stone and dirt. This isn't something that was like built for the house. It's something that the guild have dug under his house for their own use. It's very rough. Yeah. It's not very uh, official looking. What's in the barrels? 
Most of it, as you're looking, it just looks like food supplies, clothes supplies. If you want to make an investigation check, you might find a bit more fun stuff. Mm. Investigation. Investigation. Oh, hang on. I need to find. No, I'm, I keep working on my character sheet. It keeps disappearing, but I've I've figured it out. <laughs> to it. See nothing. See nothing. Well, I'll do I'll do one wee roll on the loot table. See what you get. See if I find where the loot table is. I can't remember. Ah, here we go. Okay. So one of you roll sixty six. I'll do that. Can only roll five. Just say type slash r sixty six. I did it wrong. This is for uh, some of the treasures that you will slash find. Slash r. And then just six. Yes. D6. Yeah, forward slash R space 66. Okay. So poking through the barrels of supplies, you find 260 copper coins in a little box along with a 3D6 next. This is for silver coins. Whatever, that's two. If you want. Doesn't matter which one of you roll. So 120 silver coins. And then 2d6 for gold. It's like a little lockbox that wasn't locked for some reason. And uh, 30 gold. So you find a, a little bit of treasure in this lockbox. But yeah, just take the gold and the silver. Not... Okay, so leave the copper. And then... Which one of you wants to roll on the item deal? For the one item you'll be able to find. Right. I'll do that, I suppose, as well. D100. Oh. By holding, please! Okay, so... Roll a D4. Or no, not a D4. Item table F. Where is item table F? Another D100 for the random item. 14. Okay. So, poking through what you can find in the barrels you pull out another little wooden box with some engraved carvings on it of like vines and trees and nature stuff. But it is a locked box. One of you would need to try and pick it. Well, I'll just put it in my backpack for now. Okay. So, from what you can tell, there's nothing really that looks valuable in the I need to add that gold in? I'm writing it all down. Oh, sweet. Uh, right, so I think we should investigate the room now. What are you looking so, for? And where are you searching? I don't know. There has to be something else. There has to be a room. I feel like there should be another... There must be another room than this room. So... Probably like just moving furniture about and stuff, looking for I don't know levers or buttons or something to maybe maybe under the tables, under the beds. Make the some investigation. Damn it! An eight again. <laughs> How is character going to fare? When we're rolling. Investigation. investigation. 
Come on. There we go. Yes. Okay, so what specific type of investigating are you doing, Macaulay? What exactly am I looking for here? That's what you're Don't supposed know. to know. I have no idea. This isn't my house. It depends what your Money. It's all I care about. Well, there was the letter that said they were trying to find something in this house. But what they were trying to find was not okay, on the letter. Okay. Right. If you want if you want some like persuasive, you know, encouragement to help me do this, right? What they're looking for is probably quite valuable, so fuck it. Okay. Fine. Valuable things. Let's look for valuable things. But well, how are you investigating to find this hidden stuff? You've already searched the boxes. So searching the rest of the room, what are you looking for or what are you hidden doing? Hidden wall thingies, what do you call them? Like a hollow spot in the wall or something? Something like that or like a button. And what way are you what way are you doing that? Like tapping the I wall? Will tap the wall, I will look at the wall, I will touch the <laughs> wall. <laughs> Gonna love the glass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the scene from the fucking Hobbit here. <laughs> okay. with the glass up against the wall and I wouldn't spare So as you're going metal. along with your dagger in <laughs> hand, just like tapping the wall with your pommel to see, like, does it sound like stone? Does it feel like it's just dirt? You're coming along and then there's one point you hit it and it feels more like the solo, the hollow knocking sound of wood. Oh, Letho, it's a hidden door. Let's go. Where? Over here. In one of the corners. Oh, hell, yeah. I will one say corners, this right corner here. over here. Mm -hmm. So taking a closer look at it, you can see it's similar to what was done in the guild hideout itself, where there was like a kind of fake wall put up that looked like it matched with the rest of the the wall, but was clearly not of the same material when you knew what you were looking for. Nice. Right, well, let's open up to pull it down, kick it through, whatever needs to be done. Which way are you opening it? Uh... Kick it down. I don't know. We no. open it Could we slide it? What way are you sliding it? Like pushing it in? No, like to the side. So, putting your hands on this like wooden panel, you put a bit of force in trying to push it to the side, and there's a bit of move, like a bit of give to it. But there's definitely something blocking it from just going straight to the side. What if we would like just push it forward? Like into the wall? Yeah. It goes in about an inch, but won't go any further. Ah. To the right? The other way? Well, you're keeping it pushed in or keeping it normal? Oh, keeping it pushed in. Okay. Push, pushed in and then trying to like move it to the side. So as you get it pushed in as far as it'll go and then jiggle it, you feel it slide across to the side and into the wall a portion about a foot. And then you can see in the wall there's a small little dugout. Like, it's not a, this isn't like a big hidden door. It's only like two foot by two foot. When you slide yeah. it out of the way, there's like a little tiny compartment dug into the the wall. And there's a little lockbox on the inside. Okay, can I like a little, grab the lockbox? Yep, it's just a little bronze looking lockbox. I shall place it on the, on the bed here. Okay. Um, is it heavy? Light. It feels sturdy, but it's not it overly like, heavy. Is it just sort of like a basic? It's a little bit kind of... fancier than the one a peasant would have. Okay. A little bit more well made. Um, we'll... 
can I use my thieves to see if I can open it? Yes, you can. Okay. Make your roll. Uh... Oh my. So, you start trying to feel around the inside of the lock with one of the picks. My lock pick. And as you're feeling around, this lock feels strange. It's nothing like anything you've ever tried to pick before. And then your pick just suddenly snaps on the inside, making it far more difficult to pick the next time around. Damn it. Gark. Yeah. See if you can lockpick this. Where's Thieves Tools? Uh, oh. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay, so you try and wiggle past the already broken lockpick and get it out. You manage to get it out, but it also feels a very foreign lock to you as well. It's nothing you've ever seen before. The inner workings are very intricate, and you feel like you're getting the pins all put up, but it just doesn't open. There must have been some uh, false locks for the pins that you've navigated incorrectly. Box means locked. Damn it. I'm assuming it takes a key, obviously, then. There's no way to know. Like, could we break it open? You could try to break it open if you wanted, yes. Break it down. Or just like a crowbar or something. Yeah, you could try pry it open. Uh, we'll give it a go. What do I roll for that? Strength. <laughs> oh. Brute force. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh boy. Oh. These are determined on doing things that always require strength. Okay, so you're trying to get it open, but you can't even Help like. Me, you can't even like get the crowbar in between oh, or the I can't do even better. the two of you working together. You can't even get the crowbar in between the two layers, like the upper. And right, we'll just cut it out part. of the wall then. How big is this thing? No, like you've oh, got. No, it's got a lockbox. It. Like it's a lockbox. We just can't open it. We we'll just yeah. take it with us then. We'll do, sort this out later. I suppose. It's like a little, <laughs> little bronze box. Oh, should we just take it with us? What does the slot actually look like? Like the keyhole? It yeah. looks like a keyhole. <laughs> Nothing special about it. No, it just got a nice bit of weight to it. It's a bit fancier than the normal person would own. But it just seems like a normal lockbox. Do I have the feeling with enough studying of this lockbox I could possibly get it open on my own? Probably. With a bit of studying into the art of lockpicking, you might be able to open it. With this type of lock, since you've never seen it before, it could be a foreign lock from another country that was imported, so that the people learning to lockpick in your land wouldn't be able to bypass its built-in safety precautions. Well... Nathan didn't have a key on him or anything like that nope. when he died, so and I mean well, I suppose we could give a quick look around for a key, but I fucking died it. Do you want to look? Uh I suppose There is the impending for... threat of what may lie outside as well. Uh, true. Uh, fuck it, we've been here too long. Right, just, let's go. Let's get out of here. We'll deal with this lockbox later. As long as they don't get it, that's all I care about. Let's go! Back! Yes. So the two of you exit the tunnel? Yes. Okay, so as you're both going up through the ladder, open the hatch. The first thing you hear is that the racket of marching and shining troops is a lot closer now. It feels like maybe one or two houses away at the most. Marching to your location. Oh, 
we'll go back to a the good old good old map here. Right. I think we should go back. Get a bomb. Find Is bomb still live in the fucking game. Yeah, he's yeah. he's in his car in the storehouse. Mm. Or eating everything in the storehouse more than probably. Oh, but I do. I need to get off. I got a lecture at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Shut your slow mind. I'm going off. I'm going off for five minutes. I'm literally finishing cider. Right. We could save uh, the escape nope. for next time. Nope. Let us go. Flee. I'm not man. doing more combat or an endured stealth rolling situation. Which way are you going? It'll take half an hour. Uh, probably just the quickest route back to Air Bomb. Uh, Air Bomb food. is up this direction. Nice. Right. The way you originally came Come on, Kark. Let's go. Under drag, man. Yeah. Too lazy. <laughs> this building. So do one stealth roll and one perception check for your progress of escaping the area. Lovely. Oh. Not good. Sorry. Is that completely escaping the area, or is that like just this stage of crossing the street? <laughs> we'll see how it goes. If it was really good, it would be the whole area. But golly. Quick. Yes. Stealth and perception to see if you can manage to sneak ah, away. Ah, God. You can already see what Jacob rolled, so you're gonna need to roll some really good shit here. Oh, oh god. <laughs> can I just leave him behind? I mean, he probably just fell through well, the trap you, door. Well, you rolled also really bad. Roll some perception. Well, just... it's not terrible compared to one. Well, you rolled a natural three, so. Yeah, but it's a twelve, though. It's a twelve. Mine's a ten. Per do do yeah, perception. You rolled a one. Oh, so okay, so as you're coming out, you know, your house, trying to get into this next house, that's when you look down the street and with your goggles, your elven eyes, that is where you see where the main clanking of troops moving is coming from. They haven't spotted you yet. Oh, fuck it. But they're about to see. It's quite a large. Attachment of troops is marching towards the house. And you can either try and hide or try and run. Oh, fucking run. Run. Yeet. Okay. Make some athletics checks. Uh, something I will hopefully not be. If it's high enough, you'll probably be able to get clean out of the area. If it's not high enough, more rolls might be required. Okay. Yes. Like all I can what you, am I can rolling? You... Athletics. Okay. So, Von Karak seeing the troops marching your direction and pointing them out to Beric, the two of you just share the silent glance of we're fucked. Run. Just jump into the house, <laughs> climb over tables, broken chairs, through walls, over windows, everything you can do. Oh, to... into the darkness. <laughs> into the darkness, gone. Everything you can do, ducking into alleys, behind stairs, just <laughs> running as fast as you can. You can hear the shout of a couple of troops behind you that might, you think, might have saw you run from the scene. But you don't look back. You just keep running and running through the streets as fast as you can. Do you want to go to the storehouse or where is your destination? Yes. Okay. Go to the storehouse, left air bomb. Then you will stop just before you get to the storehouse. Since we do not know the fate of air bomb. Just fucking murdered. <laughs> you just see him split out on the snow. Doing snow angels. Snow, no, snow angles. 